Welcome back to Stars and Miss. After the episode on modeling, let's start a new chapter focusing on the Pleiades. We'll begin with a motive whose distribution is not random, but most likely the result of history. The episode is named The Chicken and Egg Problem. Investigate the motive. The Pleiades has a hen with his cheeks that appears to have traveled across continents with a domesticated chicken out of its homeland in Southeast Asia. In the map, each red dot represents one occurrence of the Pleiades as a hen with cheeks. The motive is found in Europe, Southeast Asia, and West Africa, three disconnected regions. The map also represents other Pleiades as a flock of birds motive in blue, and the motive of the Pleiades as a duck in a nest is found in Northern Arisia, marked with cyan dots. Unsurprisingly, birds are often associated with the sky, but it seems to be particularly the case with the Pleiades. The first written mention of the Pleiades as bird is believed to be in ancient Greece. Zeus, to save the seven sisters from Orion, first turned them into a flock of doves and only then into stars. This metamorphosis is preserved, for example, in the 1st century AD Latin compilation by Aegeus. I've overlapped here the archaeological data on the propagation of the domesticated animal by Peters. Each red point corresponds uh, to some find. And I've added the pride as a hen with his cheeks in black. The first cluster of stories is found in Southeast Asia, where domestication likely occurred about 5,200 years ago. Chicken domestication was relatively late compared to that of other animals, and according to DNA studies, it might have occurred in multiple locations. Archaeological finds enable us to trace the spread of the domesticated chicken over the next years reaching China, India, Mesopotamia, Europe, and Africa. The domestic hen is found in remains in Southeast Asia around 3200 BC, Persia around 2700 BC, and it arrived in West Africa around 1300 BC, possibly by boat along the coast. The striking correlation between the motive's location and the chicken ancient diffusion routes is a starting point of our investigation. The motif has a distribution that match the early diffusion of the domesticated red fall from Southeast Asia, also called Gallus Gallus the chicken. There are indication that many ancient traditions had some understanding of the chicken's provenance. The historical records offer clues about the chicken journey. In Mesopotamia, where the plied as hen motive itself is absent, the chicken was known as a bird from Meluha, a name that most likely points to India. Further west, the Greek playwright Aristophanes referred to it as a Persian bird, thereby preserving a memory of its arrival from the east. From these mentions, we understand that the memory of the chicken's origin in the east was preserved. Persia and India are mentioned, not Southeast Asia, but the direction is correct. So, if the motif travel with a chicken, why is it absent in key region like Mesopotamia, where the chicken was known. This reveals a deeper question. Not if the motive travel, but why it was successfully adopted in some traditions and rejected in others. 
the answer lies in cultural competition. The hen with chicks motif could only take root where it did not have to compete with a more powerful motif. Returning to India, we recall the story about Arundhati Alkor, the Pleiades and the seven riches, the seven wise men of the major. In the Mahabharata, the story about the Pleiades is extended. To make a long story short, Agni, the fire god, fell in love with the sage's wife. On the other hand, Swaha was in love with Agni. A complex situation. Swaha decided to assume the shapes of the seven wives to fool Agni into having sex with her. Skanda was born from that union with six head, the number of Pleiades. The rooster is a symbol of Skanda, the war god. Even nowadays, the rooster is on Skanda's banner. In that story, the rooster is directly related to the Pleiades. In India, the rooster was culturally more powerful than a hen with chicks motif. In China, interestingly, the rooster is associated with the lunar mansion, which is characterized by the presence of the Pleiades. The 28 lunar mansions are segments of the sky used in traditional Chinese astronomy to track the moon's movement across the star. They appeared as textual names in early artifacts, such as the one you see from 433 BCE, lacquer box from the tomb of Marquis Yi of Zheng. The discovery of the tomb of the Marquis Yi is one of the most important archaeological finds bearing great importance in the understanding of the development of astronomy and star laws in China. The black dragon representing the east and the white tiger of the west are depicted on this lacquer case. The mansion containing the Pleiades is part of the white tiger region. The transformation into anthropomorphic or zoomorphic forms emerged relatively late in Chinese history. The rooster, also one of the 12 animals of the traditional zodiac cycle, came to symbolize the mansion containing the Pleiades. Here again in China, the powerful rooster image overcame the hen with chicks. With India and China, we have now a compelling story that the association between the Pleiades and the chicken traveled along the main diffusion path of the domesticated chicken. Why some remaining region on the path didn't have that association is not clear, but the general trend is very clear. The stories connecting the Pleiades to the chicken are incredibly diverse across cultures. This suggests that what traveled was not a single complex narrative. Instead, a simple, powerful association, a, a motto linking the star cluster to the species, likely journeys with the animal. Pleiades equal gallows gallows. This core image was highly flexible and interpreted differently based on local culture. In some regions, the maternal aspect of the species was emphasized, leading to the familiar hen with chicks motive. In others, like India and China, the powerful symbolism of the male was dominant, creating a strong rooster player, this connection that overshadowed or replace any focus on the hen. In our next episode, we we'll compare the importance of sky laws among tradition and their practical aspect to navigate, know the time 
and season. And here again are a few academic references if you want to dig into that topic further. See you next time. Bye bye.